Every week, you know, we like to focus on Bible prophecy for about five minutes. We call it a prophecy update. I was thinking about uh, the New Testament, especially the, uh, the epistles uh, that Peter wrote, uh, filled with uh, both fulfilled and future prophecy. And then, of course, he and Jude both quote from the book of Enoch, a non-canonical book, mostly prophetic. And there are other references, really, to that book as well uh, throughout the New Testament. So the, the writers of the New Testament, and of course, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, were really, really interested in this subject. And there are somewhere around 500 prophecies regarding the last days that are yet to be fulfilled. And we ought to be able, therefore, to identify trends in the world that would be expected in light of those prophecies. We're not saying that what we report on is the fulfillment of prophecy necessarily, but just what you would expect from reading it. For example, if you're reading the Bible in the 40s, uh, well, actually, at any time, but especially in the 1940s, you'd be expecting the rebirth of the nation of Israel uh, because that uh, was predicted, of course, and then it happened. And so that's the kind of thing that we're looking at. Jesus told us that the last days would be like the days of Noah. And then he specified what he meant by saying, for as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Now, if you go back to Genesis 6, the Bible describes the type of marriages Jesus was talking about. This is Genesis 6, 2, and 4. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Uh, the sons of God here we take to be uh, fallen angels, and it's really the only explanation that makes sense. And then in verse 4, it says, there were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. And so these sons of God came in, and they married and mated with human women, and their offspring were the Nephilim. They are described both in the Bible and in other literature of the time as a race of cannibalistic giants. So the fallen angels in Noah's day were somehow corrupting the human race by manipulating DNA. It sounds weird, but it's right there in God's word. As a result, you'd expect a trend towards messing with human DNA. Jesus said it'd be like the days of Noah, and that's the uh, key characteristic. And so you would think that, well, if I look to the news and scientific advances, I'm going to see that we're messing around with DNA, and of course, that's exactly what we're doing. I reported in an earlier update on a Chinese scientist who was altering the DNA of embryos. A follow-up article was titled, China's gene-edited babies may have enhanced intelligence due to genetic quirk. Here's some excerpts from that article. Late last year, a Chinese scientist named He Hyangku boldly declared that he had produced what would be the world's first genetically modified humans. The scientist used the gene-editing technology CRISPR to delete a specific gene. Now researchers believe that the twin girls, named Lulu and Nana, who were reportedly born healthy, may actually have altered brain function as a result. In fact, it's possible that the deletion of the gene called CCR5 might have actually made them smarter than they would otherwise have been. Hopefully, if they are altered, they'll be more Steve Rogers than Red Skull. Uh, but uh, you never know. This, the, when the, the work they're doing with animals, we've reported on this before, they solve one problem by editing the genes and they create 10 more that are very serious. And so this is, um, this is kind of weird that they're, they're doing this on embryos and um, it, it's not going to work out well, I'll tell you that right now. DNA manipulation is what you'd expect from reading the Bible. As believers, we expect Jesus could return at any moment. He promised the church, you and I who are in Christ, that he would return to resurrect the dead in Christ and then rapture living believers. And that would all happen before any part of the great tribulation. I mentioned Enoch. Enoch, you know, was removed from the earth in a rapture prior to the global flood. And that's a picture to us of how we will be removed from the earth prior to the global tribulation. It's an imminent, any minute event. People say, well, you know, it hasn't happened. It's imminent but unpredictable. That means we should expect it at any moment, but plan as if it could be some time. And there's no contradiction in that. That's what the apostles did. Are you ready for the rapture? If not, get ready, stay ready, keep looking up. Ready or not, Jesus is coming. 